Daf Yomi, Tractate Bavakama, Daf Ayin Zion, Ahmed Aleph, Ayin Zion, page A, side A. Um, this has to be, if not the shortest, one of the shortest um, pages or uh, sides. We call it uh, Amud, uh, Amud, Aleph, Amud, Bet. So this, is, this has to be the shortest side in, in all of Shas. Um, besides, sure, there's other um, Dafim that, well, there's one that I can remember, I think it was in Nazir, 33, B. It's also an anomaly. It's it's kind of, it has no words at all. It's it's just toast. It's just commentary. The whole there's, there's no Talmud on it. But this is so short, so maybe I'll just give a little you know introduction about that. But this whole this whole Amud is only nine words. So here it is, um, top of the page. Uh, the word is uh, okay. Para mitame Tumas Ochlin. Hoyl the la shasa kosher, and what it says is that uh, the meat of the red heifer is susceptible to contracting ritual impurity of food, despite the fact that it is prohibited to derive benefit from such meat, since it had a time when it was fit for consumption. Um, so. What that means is that um, sort of like a theoretical discussion because um, red heifers are not they're not even applicable now uh, in the physical sense um, but uh, in the spiritual sense yes but we're talking here about a red heifer who like Theoretically speaking, a person, you know, if they would eat food, if they would eat the meat of a red heifer, and and can this meat contract impurity? Okay, can it be impure? Impu- and um, so the idea was that um, you would think that not because um, anything that's prohibited from eating, it's not, it, it can't become. Um, it can't become impure. It's not food. It's not. But what they want to say here is that there was a time when it wasn't prohibited because it wasn't consecrated to be a red heifer. It could have been eaten as kosher meat before it was designated as a red cow, even though it may have been a red cow. Uh, so that's what they're saying here. That's the whole. That's the whole uh, Amud.